All right, everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Hopefully this light, hold on a second. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. I wasn't really fair on the colors and focusing tests of the SL2S. I'm learning, and so I wanna share some of the learnings with you. We're gonna do this again a little bit. So if you have an SL2S and you saw my prior video, um, I should probably just delete those, let's be honest. We should do something like this. I'm learning a bit more. I wanna do a couple different scenarios. I'm in my office right now. I've got a bunch of different light. I've got like warm light above me. I got this white soft box right here and got this light behind me here and uh, uh, I'm shooting a log. So I, I try to set the white balance where the picture frames in the back, like that, that, that uh, framing is actually pretty close to white. And so what I wanna do is a couple different focusing tests and uh, see how responsive it can be. Because what I noticed in the first ones that they were, uh, the focusing was a little slow. And so I set the sensitivity and the speed all the way up. I'm on face and eye detection right now. And I wanna see how it's doing as I sit here and talk to you guys. And also if I like, come forward into the lens and come back into the lens, how does it keep up and track my face and eyes? Um, hopefully the audio is not too bad because it's on top of the mic this or on top of the camera this time, not on my lapel, and it's in my office, which is kind of echoey. Um, now, one of the things, obviously, with this type of setup is it doesn't do good for product showcase, and so I want to see how it tracks my eyes and my face. But also, if I show you guys something like I don't know something as big as my coffee mug right here, will it pick it up? What I noticed is, is it stays really sticky to my eye if I'm off frame and it can still see me, but if I hide behind it. Sometimes it'll eventually slowly grab me. And if I move forward and backwards, it does okay. Eventually it finds my face. I notice it finds my face a lot faster than it does inanimate objects. Whereas like in a Sony, especially the ZV-1, it knows that the closest thing is what you want, right? In product showcase mode. This face and eye detection mode, it just stays locked on your face and eyes for the most part. Now I'm gonna move over a little bit here off frame and I want to see how much it's pulsing because with sensitivity and speed way up, the light that's back there probably be pulsing a lot. I'm also curious how this ends up looking at post because I'm shooting a log with all the different light colors. It's kind of a, a lighting nightmare. So this is ace and eye and face tracking with this setting plus three plus five sensitivity and speed with the Panasonic Lumix 20 to 60 lens on here. And I have no clue how it's doing because I can't see. Um, unless I use the Leica Photos app to like as a monitor or I plug in the monitor to do this. So let me pause this right now. And what I'm going to do is then switch to a, a different setting to see if that changes any of the tests that I just did. All right, iPhone mode here. We're going to make a couple changes. So we're going to go to focusing mode and we're going to change, leave it AFC, leave the speed and sensitivity where it is. But now iPhone mode, we're going to do spot or maybe I'm sorry, let's do field. And so that should put a box right here in the middle. If you guys can see the box and that's where my head is. Um, now what I found when I had the Lumix camera was, well, I'll tell you in a second. Let's, let's get off this iPhone. We can test it while I'm talking to you. Okay. So here's the deal. What I found when I had the Lumix cameras, which I'm guessing that Panasonic, cause they have this L2 Alliance, Panasonic and Leica developed a similar algorithm for the contrast based autofocus. What I found was that if I kept the spot real small, like you guys just saw on my little iPhone demonstration there, is that it did a better job. It didn't have to compete with like algorithms of like what else is walking in on a frame. And so uh, hopefully, as long as I'm on that box in my, my screen, hopefully it does a better job. Um, now the problem is with this setting, I can't see where I'm at in that box. I just know that like 20 millimeter field of view, I'm looking straight in the lens, something in my face has gotta be there. And I would assume, because eye and face detection is off, that if I did some kind of product showcase in that, uh, in that little spot box, that it would work better. But I don't know where it's at, so I'm gonna attempt to do that right now. Let's see if it does this. Did it pick it up? Go back to my face. How are we doing with the pulsing off in the corner? I kept the same framing as the end of the last shot because I wanted to see it. Again, this is something small, right? Is it picking it up? I don't know. Um, go back to the mug, do the same mug test, to keep things consistent. Check out my Ember mug. By the way, great investment. Great investment. Um, again, I'm doing this because I just, I wasn't fair the first time. I also noticed that Setting the white balance makes a big difference. My house is painted like a, a, a dark bluish gray. Any camera I've had, 
even like the Sony's and stuff have had a really hard time with white balance there because if there's sun coming on my face, but like the house is blue, it like it doesn't know if it should do like a warm or a cold uh, white balance correction. So you basically have to kind of set it, which is which is always interesting. Um, okay, so that's that's this one, and then I will switch to the last last uh, option I wanted to try and show you guys in just a second here. All right, so for this last one, start with the shaky footage. We're gonna do the old Casey cons camera conspiracies trick, where you're focusing. And instead of putting it on AFC, you put it AFS, and it'll stay focused where you're at. AF mode, I'll do the field. We'll try that. All right, I'm out of focus right now. If you remember Camera Conspiracies guy, Casey, <clears throat> when he had a GX85 or G85, he would, like, tap the screen and then hold, and it would focus. And then as long as you kept the same distance, you were always in focus. So we're going to try that right now. We push and hold this. Hopefully acquired focus on my face. And now for a talking headpiece, I don't have to worry about pulsing and that kind of stuff as long as I stay on the same plane of view, right? Like, if I'm sitting here talking to you guys, what's going on over my shoulder and all that stuff doesn't matter. Now where it does matter, obviously, is if I come closer, I'll be out of focus and I'll have to press and hold and reacquire. That kind of thing. And if I go back to a comfortable spot like this, it's the same type of thing. And so, for talking headpieces, does it really matter? It's a way to like set manual focus and just leave it alone in video. Um, not ideal, but if you guys worry about pulsing lights and stuff like that in the middle of a talking headpiece, you just do that and, and you can, frankly, you can do it from the Like a Photos app where you can just say, okay, I'm sitting down somewhere, I've set my stuff up and just hit focus, acquire focus and hit record and just leave it there and don't change where you're at. So that's that's the three, three different ways, like there's, that eye and face tracking, there's limiting the box to the middle of the screen as long as you're sitting there talking to it, which I found to work decent. And then there's also, of course, just leaving out AFS, which should limit any hunting and that kind of stuff. But you can't move, you're in jail. So, I don't know, what'd you guys think? Um, I'll go outdoors and do another log test here at the end, and then I'm gonna go to like do some photo stuff. Done screwing out the video stuff on this for now. And uh, just wanted to do all these tests for my ski trip coming up in four or five days. So I at least had a general idea how to work this camera before I put it through its paces out there. Thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it and I'll see you guys on the next one.